This plant is called Gopertia latifolia, but some of you might actually know this as Calathea lancifolia, but it got changed over to Gopertia, I think relatively recently, and it's in the Marantaceae family, which is also called the prayer plants, which if you know prayer plants, they kind of fold up and go down with their leaves, which people absolutely love. And of course, the coloration of these plants with the kind of dark purple reddish undersides and dark green and light green markings on the top is a sheer winner. So people always grab these plants at garden centers and nurseries. However, these plants could be a little bit moderate to high maintenance for a lot of different reasons. Prayer plants generally like to be high humidity plants. And also they don't like a tremendous amount of light. So if you're somebody within your home and you don't have a lot of bright light conditions, you have more moderate light, maybe partial shade, maybe low light conditions, then these plants will actually thrive. And part of the reason why you know that is because of the coloration and often plants with dark purple or red undersides and darker green tops are understory plants. And this particular plant comes from some parts of Central and South America. And uh, I talk a lot about uh, this particular plant in general and more of houseplantmasterclass.com and also my prayer plant care video, which you could actually see on YouTube. So I'm only just gonna touch upon the highlights with this one. This particular one I've had growing in my vertical swing garden near my northeast uh, facing window now for several years, for as long as I've actually had my vertical swing garden. So this one's looking a little bit beat up, but that's so typical for prayer plants. So you'll notice some like brown edging. And again, this is maybe due to inconsistent watering or sometimes when I get lazy, I don't do distilled water. And distilled water is kind of important for prayer plants because they get a little bit finicky when it comes to salt or fertilizer buildups. And if you actually have water, like most people in North America, it's actually fluorinated or chlorinated, and that could actually damage a lot of leaves. So I think if you get a filter or if you get distilled water, that's going to be much better for plants such as these. As far as fertilizer goes, I would definitely do a fertilizer even though they're sensitive to it, but you might be able to do a little bit more like an organic fertilizer, which is a little bit gentler, and you could do it on a bi-weekly to monthly basis, or you could do a well-balanced fertilizer or something like a 10-10-5 and uh, just cut it in half for these particular plants. You're going to want to keep it relatively moist. I mean, you still want to have a well-draining mixture and it's going to dry out a little bit between watering, but don't actually dry it out too much or you'll start getting those little necrotic or brown spots on this particular plant. As far as pests go, I haven't had any issues with this one, which is a really good thing. So I think that most of the challenges that you get with Marantaceae or prayer plants, in this case, the Gopertia, is um, for various different other reasons, as I had mentioned. The lack of humidity, uh, underwatering, or also using water that is chlorinated, fluorinated, or just has high amounts of heavy metals or heavy minerals, or anything that is over-fertilized. Otherwise, it's a beautiful plant to have, as you could see, ex extremely gorgeous coloration, and fun to have if you don't mind a little bit more of a high maintenance plant.